Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to TMRP, the Metropolis Radio Podcast. This week, I'm going to be talking about all the things that got introduced at the Disney Investor Day 2020 convention, with the exception of the Hulu and Nat Geo announcements, because I feel like that those really aren't big enough to really talk about, because the only thing that really got announced on Hulu was that the Kardashians were going to be doing something over there. Ooh, big fucking deal. Um, Now, we got a lot of announcements from multiple arms of the Walt Disney Company, from Pixar and Disney Animation Studios, to Marvel, to Lucasfilm, to even the FX Network. And I am going to go through the announcements and give my two cents on each of them. Is there a promise for some of these projects? Am I even interested in some of these projects? Hell, are you guys even interested in some of these projects that they've announced? Let's go through them all together. Now, this could be another long episode, so sit back, grab your Scooby Snacks, And go to the bathroom now if you need to. This episode will be raw and unedited, seeing as I want to get through this episode in one take. Now, this could go either really, really good, or it could go really, really bad. But we're not going to know until, you know, I get this to post and uh, whether or not I get this uploaded. So let's start things off with all the Disney Plus announcements. And we are going to start off with the Mighty Ducks Game Changers. Now, all of these blurbs I am reading either directly from Twitter or I'm reading directly from an MSN article that has all of these announcements outlined, which I will happily leave a link in the description of uh, on, on this video on whatever platform you're watching this on. That way you can see this all for yourself. But getting back to it, let's start off with the Mighty Ducks Game Changers. The blurb reads, The Mighty Ducks Game Changers continues the legacy of hockey's finest fouls. The series picks up where the films left off. Emilio Estevez returns as Gordon Bombay and Lauren Graham is joining the flock coming to Disney plus. Okay. I could, I could see the mighty ducks coming back for like the, the, the next generation. I mean, you're not going to be able to have the original cast back because they've all grown up with the exception of Emilio Estevez, but I'm surprised that Disney was able to get that guy out of retirement. You know, well, you know what they say? Money talks. Uh, next up is uh, is Turner and Hooch, and I really don't know how I feel about this, but let's let's read the blurb. Inspired by the classic film, Turner and Hooch is a buddy comedy starring Josh Peck and his partner, a sweet and slobbery mastiff, coming to Disney+. Plus. Now, see, here's, here's my problem with this. Is this going to be a movie, or is this going to be a series? Because the original movie was with, was with Tom Hanks, and it was, a, it was a buddy comedy movie that totally was, like, was a 1980s comedy. What will a clean detective do when he has to care for a slobbering mutt? And what I what I'm getting at is if this is a, if this is a show, the charm is gonna is gonna wear itself off real real quick. If it's if it's a one off movie with Josh Peck and the dog, I could see I could see it working. But then again, um, I'd rather just watch the the original with Tom Hanks because. A lot of times, you know, those older comedies, even though they, some of them can age, a buddy comedy like this can really last the test of time. Uh, Next up, we've got Big Shot and, you know, the blurb. Big Shot is a celebration of girl power set in the world of high school basketball. Oh, yay! Starring John Stamos, uh, Yvette Nicole Brown. Um, You may not recognize her name, but most of you might remember her as either Helen from Drake and Josh or as uh, Shirley from the uh, from the uh, NBC series Community, and uh, Jessalyn Gilsig, I've never heard of her. Uh, big shot packs and big fun coming soon to Disney Plus. I'm this is a hard pass for me. Um, I I'm not really interested because I think high school basketball is boring as hell. Uh, then we have the Mysterious Benedict Society. Another mystery is unfolding. Join Tony Hale and Kristen Shul- uh, Kristen uh, Shalade. Now, I'm looking at, at the picture of her. I don't know how to pronounce her name. She looks really familiar, but I can't place her. Um, and I'm kind of lazy to look it up. Because if I scroll through her IMDb page, guys, I'm going to be stuck here for five minutes. But if any of you, like, know who the actress is, please let me know. Because she's she that actress is really ringing a bell and I can't place her. But getting back to the, but getting back to the blurb. You know, in the Mysterious Benedict Society, based on the international best-selling book series coming to Disney+, Plus. Okay, I, I understand with it being a mystery series, you want to kind of keep it under wraps. Um, I'm going to have to wait for reviews on this one because I've, I've seen too many bad mystery shows to like be all excited. 
Then we've got Hocus Pocus 2. Now, before I read the blurb, I'm just going to say this is a hard pass for me. I was not a fan of the original Hocus Pocus. I actually didn't see Hocus Pocus until just about four or five years ago. I was in college and really did not like it. Uh, but the blurb reads, exclusively on Disney+, Plus, Hocus Pocus 2 is the spooky sequel to the 1993 Halloween cult classic Hocus Pocus. Adam Shankman is, sent, is set to direct. Okay. I mean, if you're a fan of Hocus Pocus, great. You know, if not, that's fine. And of all things, of all movies to remake, they decide to remake Three Men and a Baby. The original with Tom Selleck and, and Steve, and, uh, Steve Gutenberg. Uh, they are remaking it with uh, Zac Efron uh, and is slated for a 2022 release on uh, on Disney+. Plus. Okay, uh, another pointless remake. Well, you know, they did remake that uh, Adventures in, baby in Babysitting for a made-for-TV movie, so this, honest to God, does not shock me. This this next one I'm a little concerned with, and that's the Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Um, Chippendale are back in a hybrid live-action animated feature directed by Akiva Schaefer and starring John Mulaney and, and Andy Samberg. Chippendale Rescue Rangers, an original movie, is coming to Disney+. Plus. And that's what I have the fear of, is the hybrid live-action animated feature. Because this can either go one of two ways. It could either be like the movie Enchanted with uh, Amy Adams, where the where the beginning of the movie was animated, and then when she comes up through the sewers into New York, that's when it becomes live-action. Or it could be like the Smurfs, where it's all CGI characters with you know actual like humans talking, which I don't think Chip and Dale really would work outside of animation once they start talking to real people that that for me is you know at least in my opinion it's gonna get really really weird uh then we've got pinocchio i think this originally was supposed to go to theaters uh one of disney's all-time classics is coming to disney plus very similar to what uh, lady and the tramp did uh with the new live action retelling of pinocchio starring tom hanks and directed by robert zemeckis um okay i was probably gonna pass on this to begin with because my feelings on the Disney live action remix are, are that they are pointless cash grabs. Uh, and speaking of Disney live action remakes, Peter Pan and Wendy is also going to be going direct to Disney plus, uh, David Lowry directs an amazing cast, including, uh, Yara Shahidi in the role of Tinkerbell and Jude Law as Captain Hook. Um, I might see the Peter Pan and Wendy movie. I did watch the live action movie that I think I, it came out in 2003. I think Universal did it. Um, wasn't a bad movie, so, um, I might check it out, I might not, and, oh, speaking of Enchanted, and this part I forgot, is, uh, Disenchanted, the long-awaited sequel to the hit, to the hit film Enchanted, and, but, and, yes, Enchanted was a decent movie, that was with, uh, Amy Adams as, um, I think, I think it was Princess Giselle, and, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Patrick Dempsey was also, was also in the movie, uh, we'll stream exclusively on Disney Plus. Amy Adams returns as, as Giselle, uh, who found her who found her life flipped upside down when. Blah, 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 let me restart there. You know, returns as Giselle, who found her life flipped upside down when she fell out of her animated fantasy world and discovered herself stuck in real life Manhattan. Yes, if you have not seen the movie Enchanted, give it give it a watch. It's it's actually pretty good. Uh, next up is a uh, Sister Act three. Personally, I think there was only one good Sister Act movie, and that was the first one. Sister Act 2 is way too much of an 80s movie uh, for my liking. Um, but The Blur Breeds, the third film in the Beloved Sister Act series, again, mostly the first movie is Beloved. The second one is kind of meh, uh, is in development. And guys, before I go any further, Sister Act 3 has been in development for at least the past 10 to 15 years. So the fact that they have announced that this is still in development you know, there's a real chance this movie will never come out. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg is on board to star and produce with Tyler Perry also signed on as a producer. Sister Act 3 will premiere on Disney Plus. Again, with how many, with how long this movie has been quote unquote in development, I highly doubt it's going to get released, but hey, who knows? Uh, next up is Night at the Museum. Uh, comes to Disney Plus with a new twist. This time it's animated. And I can see them going down the animated route over the live action again because um, they're completely done with Ben Stiller and good luck trying to recast Robin Williams as Teddy Roosevelt. There's, you wouldn't be able to do it. Everybody would be screaming bloody murder, but at least if it's an animated project, you could at least draw him to look like, you know, draw him to look like Robin Williams to a degree, but get a voice actor for it. 
Uh, Sean Levy, who has helped shape the blockbuster franchise as director of the previous films, is back as a producer. Now that the museum launches on Disney Plus in 2021. Again, I wish, you know, is this going to be a movie or is this going to be a show? Because I think Night at the Museum worked be work better as a movie. I think as a show, the whole thing kind of falls apart. Uh, next up, we have Flora and Ulysses. Um, a cynical young comic book fan and her super-powered squirrel sidekick team up in Flora and Ulysses, an original movie stream on February 19th. Pass. I, I don't care. Uh, based off the iconic book about 10-year-old Flora, an avid comic book fan and self-avowed self cynic who rescues a squirrel with unique superhero powers. Eh. Flora and Ulysses stars Ma uh, Matilda Lawler and is directed by Lena Khan. Uh, the film makes its debut on Disney Plus February 19th, 2021. Again, that's a very, very hard pass for me. Here's another one that's a very hard pass. It's Cheaper by the Dozen. A reimagining of the hit comedy with blackish producer Kenya Barris will air on Disney Plus in 2022. The story centers on a multiracial blended family of 12 navigating a hectic home life while managing their family business. Gabrielle Union is set to star. That is a hard fucking pass. I am not a Gabrielle Union fan. And also... For those, and also for those of you that don't know, even the Steve, the Steve Martin movie, I think it was Steve Martin and Helen Hunt. Um, I don't remember who plays what. Was that Helen Hunt? Let me, let me look that up. Um, so I am going to bore the shit out of you guys for a second. Do, 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 do. All right. Cheaper by the dozen. Cheaper by the dozen. No, Bonnie Hunt. I'm sorry. It was, yeah, Steve Martin and Bonnie Hunt. That is actually a remake of a movie made back in 1950 called Cheaper by the Dozen, that was actually inspired by a true story even back then. So, th this is not the first remake of Cheaper by the Dozen, but most of you might be familiar with the Steve Martin movie. Now, next up is Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and I actually do have some hope for this project. You know, the books, which have spanned a successful live-action film franchise from the popular books, comes to Disney Plus in 2021, but here's the caveat. As an, as an all-new animated film, and this is why I have hope for the series. I am young enough to have grown up with Diary of a Wimpy Kid. And the books had a very unique art style. It wasn't just a bunch of stick figures. And it's kind of hard to explain without showing something on screen. And I'm kind of lazy and I don't want to flash something up on the screen. But if they bring back that art style from the books and apply that to the movie, I think it could really, really work. Next up, we have the Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Buck Wild was introduced in Ice Age 4 uh, exclusively for Disney+. Plus. It's a new spinoff of the popular Ice Age franchise. Uh, was it really all that popular? I know that they made five movies, but um, the only Ice Age movie I have not seen is the fifth one. That's the one where uh, Scrat goes into space. Uh, the story centers on three series favorites, the Prankster, Possum Brothers, Crash, and Eddie. They were introduced in um, uh, Ice Age 2, The Meltdown, because I actually preferred the, um, oh, what's her name? What's that character's name? Uh, the one that Queen Latifah uh, voiced that was a mammoth, but honest to God thought that she was a possum. You know, that, that I actually preferred her over, over Crash and Eddie. Uh, and the swashbuckling titular weasel, Buck, like I said, I think Buck was introduced in the fourth movie. Uh, Simon Pegg will be returning will be returning in the role of Buck. The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild is slated for an early 2022 release. Uh, then we have some sports biography films and just announced three new original movies inspired by the real life stories of Chris Paul. Now, Chris Paul is the only athlete on here that I know. I remember he used to play for uh, for the uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks like, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, Giannis, I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name. Anti Kuan. Um, Paul, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to run with it. Never heard of him. And uh, Keenan Lowe coming to Disney Plus. Okay, big whoop de doo So that does it for all of the Disney Plus announcements. Now let's move on to the Disney live action films. And we start off with Jungle Cruise. This movie that has gotten pushed back quite a bit. Uh, the film takes audiences on a on a roll on a roll licking thrill ride down the Amazon with wisecracking skipper Frank Wolf and, intre and, and intrepid researcher Dr. Lily Lily Houghton. Uh, Jaime Colette Sarah directs the film, which stars Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Emily Blunt, Edgar Ramirez, Jack Whitehall, with Jesse Plemons and Paul Giamatti. Disney's Jungle Cruise Jungle Cruise is slated for July 2021. I think it was originally supposed to come out this year in 2020, but obviously. 
got pushed back because of the because of the pandemic bullshit. Then we have the Lion King live action prequel. Why the hell would you want to make a prequel? You know, when when the Lion King had its sequels, the the original Lion King the anime movie actually had two sequels. You had Lion King to Simba's Pride. Then you had the Lion King one and a half that came out, I think, in 2002, 2003. And it focused on that time jump between when Simba was a cub and then when he grew up into it as an adult with uh, Timon and Pumbaa. You know, why not just why not just remake Lion King one and a half and just, you know, have it fill in that gap there. But, you know, from the blurb, currently in development with an inspired take that revisits the iconic characters uh, for a live action prequel, you're going to have to show um, how uh, Mufasa and Scar grew to hate each other, despite the fact they were brothers. Uh, Barry Jenkins is set to direct the film. Hans Zimmer, Fer uh, Farrell Williams, and Nicholas Bertel will deliver the music. Big whoop de doo I have absolutely no interest. Um, despite be Largely because it's a prequel. Why, why not explore that time period between when Simba was a cub and then when he became an adult with Timon and Pumbaa? Uh, the next up is The Little Mermaid. Uh, meet the cast of Disney's The Little Mermaid starry, starring Halle Bailey. She is going to be Ariel. Um, David Diggs is going to be Sebastian, Javier Bardem is going to be King Triton, uh, Jacob Tremblay will be Flounder, uh, Melissa McCarthy is going to be, is, is, is going to come in as Ursula, and I could actually see her pulling off Ursula, I don't know about her singing voice, God fucking help, I hope that they actually hire somebody and she just lip syncs the whole thing, like what, uh, George Clooney did in, uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, um, Jonah Howard King, he will be, uh, Prince Eric, and um, Aquafina is going to be a uh, scuttle. Um, da, 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 directed by Rob Marshall, featuring music from the animated original and new music by Al Menken and Lin Manuel Miranda. Life under the sea without the hook. Oh God, this this one this one's gonna suck. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it right now. Um, yeah, this this movie's this movie is is just gonna be bad. Most of the live action remakes have been bad, so. You know, I, I'm not intending on seeing this to begin with. And, you know, if I'm wrong, great. But if I'm right, then, uh, told you so. Um, okay, next up we've got, we've got Cruella. They're doing yet another 101 Dalmatians live action movie. The original one they did was in the mid nineties. And that was the one with uh, Glenn Close as a uh, Cruella de Vil. Uh, but this one actually does have a twist. Uh, the film dives into the rebellious early days of one of the most notorious and notoriously fashionable villains, the legendary Cruella, Cruella de Vil. Emma Stone stars as Estella, a.k.a. Cruella, opposite Oscar winner Emma Thompson as the Baroness, the head of a prestigious fashion house who plucks Estella from obscurity as a burgeoning designer. Uh, it's set against the backdrop of 1970s punk rock London, oh yay, and is directed by Craig uh, Gillespie or Gillespie, I have heard that last name pronounced both ways as Gillespie or Gillespie. However you pronounce it, like I said, I've heard it pronounced both ways, so I'm going to run with it. Uh, Cruella is coming in 2021. whoop de doo And that does it for all the Disney live action um, movies. Now let's get into the Disney animated studios, not to be confused with Pixar. Uh, this is Disney's own animation studio. And the first one we have is uh, Raya and the Last Dragon. Uh, their only hope is a magical, mythical, self-deprecating dragon named Sisu. Ryan the Last Dragon comes to theaters and on Disney Plus with Premiere Access on March 5th, 2021. Um, Premiere Access for them did not work out well for Mulan. I don't know what they're thinking with doing the Premiere Access again. Maybe because it's animated, but also it's a, new, it's a newer movie. It doesn't have... The benefit of like a Trolls World Tour where at least that was a sequel. And then you also had Scoob that was obviously Scooby-Doo was already an established brand. This is a brand new movie. Why not just do day and date release? Release it for free on Disney Plus and theaters on, on, the, on the same day. Knock it off with this Premier Access bullshit. Uh, then we have Encanto. And this fall, Walt Disney Animation Studios' all-new film Encanto takes you to Colombia where a magical family live in a magical home directed by By directed by Byron Howard and Jared Bush, co-directed and co-written by um, Charisse Castro-Smith, Car Castro sorry, took me a minute there, and music written by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Uh, and then it go and then there's actually an even bigger description here. 
Uh, it tells the tale of an extraordinary family, the Ma the Madrigals, who live who live hidden in the mountains of Colombia in a magical house in a vibrant town and a wondrous charm place called an Encanto. Uh, the magic of the Encanto has blessed every child in the family with a unique gift from super strength to the power to heal every child except one, Mirabel. But when she discovers that the magic surrounding the Encanto is in danger, Mirabel decides that she, the only ordinary magical, might just be her exceptional family's last help. Encanto opens in theaters November 24, 2021. So there is no simultaneous day and date release. Um, I don't know if I'm even going to bother with um with this one. It just, it doesn't sound interesting to me. I've seen so many of these types of movies with like the, with like the magical village, you know, just absolutely fall apart. But here's one that I'm genuinely excited for, and that's Baymax. Uh, it takes place in the fantastical city of Sa of San Francisco and features fan favorite healthcare bot Baymax, uh, created by Don Hall, the director of Big Hero Six, which Baymax made his appearance in. The funny part is with Baymax, when I first heard his name, when I first watched Big Hero Six, I think it came out 2014. I honestly thought his name was Betamax, like the like the like the beta tapes. You would have the beta tapes, the Betamax player. But I learned years later it was he was just Baymax. Uh, Baymax premieres on Disney Plus in early 2022. This one, because I liked Big Hero 6, I will give it a shot. Um, along with this one, Zootopia Plus. Uh, head back to the fast pace, head back to the fast-paced mammal metropolis of Zootopia in a short form series directed by Trent Corey and Josie Trinidad. I have to one, I think this is just gonna be a bunch of like, you know, five to ten minute shorts, but I don't mind that. Uh, Zootopia Plus dives deeper into the into the lives of some of the feature film's most intriguing characters, including Fru Fru, the newly married Arctic Shrew, Gazelle's tra Gaz Gazelle's talented tiger dancers, and the sloth full of surprises. Flash. Oh, hey, you guys. Oh my god, I lo I lo I absolutely love Flash. The worst part about Zootopia, though, and here's where I'm going to go into my little rant. Um, oh, when did that come out? I think it came out in 2016. Yes, it came out in 2016. Because when I went to go see Force Awakens in theaters, the teaser trailer ruined the best gag of the movie. When um, when um, when the rabbit and the um. And the fox, I can't remember their names off the top of my head right now. When they go into the DMV and it, and it's like nothing but sloths, you know, every every single adult in that theater was was rolling on the floor laughing. And on and honestly, I feel I feel like it that Disney ruined the best gag of Zootopia by releasing that as your teaser, and it sucked. You know, but continuing the short form series debuts on Disney Plus in spring 2022. Again, I will give Zootopia Plus a shot. Uh, Tiana, coming to Disney Plus in 2023, is a long-form musical comedy series featuring the extraordinary entrepreneur who's now Princess of the Kingdom, uh, Maldonia. The all-new adventures explore both Maldonia and Tiana's beloved hometown, New Orleans. Tiana is the first princess to have her own Walt Disney Animated Studios series. Was she the princess from, uh, Princess and the Frog? I don't remember. I, I, I've only seen snippets of that movie, and that movie came out, like, ten years ago. I don't remember if you guys know. Um, please let me know if I'm right, and if I and if I'm wrong, uh, please correct me in the comments. I don't mind being wrong. Uh, next up, we've got um, Moana the series. Um, I had no interest in Moana. I never saw it, so probably not going to watch the show. Uh, coming to Disney Plus in 2023 is a new long form musical series that follows spirited Voyager Moana as she ventures far beyond the reef. The studio is once again connecting with storytellers from the Pacific Islands to help tell stories of wayfinding and other traditions brought brought to life for generations through oral storytelling. Okay, this next one, I'm not even gonna, I'm I'm gonna butcher the hell out of this name, and I hope I get it right. Is uh, Iwaju. Um, now, from the blurb, in a first of its kind collaboration, Disney Animation and Pan African Entertainment Company Ku Kugali will team up to create an all new science fiction series coming to Disney Plus in 2022. Iwaju. Uh, check out a first look at visual development art from the series. And uh, I'm clicking on an image here. Um, hold on. Okay, I'm at, okay. I'm seeing I'm seeing an image. I'm seeing an image here. Um, I'm gonna put the image up on the screen right now in three, two, 
and one. Um, I'm getting a lot of like Romeo and Juliet vibes if if you look at because if you split the screen down the middle, you've got you've got the Montague you got the Montagues on the right and the Capulets on the left. I may be getting that wrong. I think Juliet was a Capulet. I don't know. I haven't had to read Romeo and Juliet in pro- probably since high school, and I try to block that out of the memory, but. The visual design, the visual design of it, actually, it actually looks pretty cool. You know, I, I do like, I do like the art style. So maybe I'll get, maybe you know, I, I'm probably gonna give this a shot when when it comes out in um in uh 2022 if if it comes out. Hopefully it does. And uh, that was the last announcement from um um from the uh, Disney from the Walt Disney Animation Studios. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break, guys, because I do need to grab a drink of water. But uh, I will come right back, and uh, we will go right into the uh, into the Pixar announcements. All right, guys, let's tear right into the Pixar announcements. And the first Pixar announcement was called Pixar Bites. Um, and the the blurb on Twitter reads: Next, grab a quick snack with at Pixar Popcorn, a collection of mini shorts starring some of your favorite Pixar characters and all new bite sized stories coming to Disney Plus in January. So this is actually coming pretty soon. So Pixar is basically going back to what 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 they used to do, which was just a bunch of, you know, short films before they made their first feature film with, uh, with Toy Story and the rest is history. They have not done a short cartoon. Um, when was the last one that they did? Cause the last one that I remember was, um, the one about the two, the two people in the one man band that were trying to, you know, compete for the girl's coin. And then the, um, then the girl, the girl had lost it. And so then she started, um, then by the end she started playing the, the one man band a lot better. I can't remember the name of it, and it came out like 10, like 10, 15 years ago. It was the last one I genuinely remember. Uh, next up, we've got Doug Days. Uh, the first of three new Pixar series coming to Disney Plus is Doug Days in this Up spinoff. And I believe Doug was the dog. I don't remember the name of the bird, but I think Doug was the dog. Uh, Doug discovers the dangers of suburbia like puppies, fireworks, and squirrels. Hi there. Yeah, Doug was the dog. Uh, Doug Days will premiere on Disney Plus in fall 2021. Uh, then we have a Cars TV series. Uh, next, Pixar is speeding ahead with a new series following Lightning McQueen and Mater on a road trip across the country, featuring new characters, old friends, and imaginative destinations coming to Disney Plus in fall 2022. Now, where I can see this show really working is if they make this show like the um, like uh, Only in America with Larry the Cable Guy. That was a great show on the History on the History Channel. If they make this just just like that, where it's like, hey, it's uh, about you know seeing the sights, and we go on a uh, we go on a funny adventure once a week, I could I could see it working. If you try to take if you try to take it too seriously, like you did with Cars Two, um, it's not going to work. Uh, next up is a uh, win or lose. Uh, third is Pixar's first original long form animated series, Win or Lose. The show follows a middle school softball team in the week leading up to their championship game, and each episode is told from the perspective of a different character. Coming to Disney Plus in fall 2023, this is a real, real risk. Um, I don't know. Um, personally, I, I'm not even going to predict whether or not it's even going to work, whether it's even go- it's even going to work or not. It could, but you have to make each perspective interesting because if you don't, then your whole show kind of falls apart at that point. Next up, we have Luca. Uh, our next feature film is Luca. It's a celebration of the friendship between a boy named Luca and his best friend Alberto. I think it's actually pronounced Lucha. No, I think it's Luca, because Lucha would have an H in it. Um, and his best friend Alberto during their unforgettable summer. You won't want to miss Luca diving in the theaters June 2021. That doesn't tell me one damn thing about what the movie is. So um, right now, I'm probably going to skip it until more information comes out. Uh, next up, we have Turning Red. Uh, director of the Academy Award-winning short Bao, uh, Dormi Shi, brings us Turning Red. Meet Meet May. She experiences the awkwardness of being a teenager with an added twist. When she gets too excited, she transforms into a giant red panda. Turning Red comes to theaters March 11th, 2022. Um, that just screams, like, gimmick. Like I said with Turner, who's, like, a really bad, like, 80s movie where, you know... You know, or like the Incredible Hulk, you won't want to make me angry. Or what happens when a teenage girl dealing with awkwardness has a secret identity that she can transform into a giant red panda? 
that's honestly what it's screaming to me. This is a hard pass for me. And this is the one that honestly pisses me off the most is Lightyear. Um, blasting in the theaters June 17, 2022, Lightyear is the definitive story of the original Buzz Lightyear. Here's the part that pisses me off. Voiced by Chris Evans, get ready to go to Infinity and Beyond with Lightyear. Here's my question. Since this is going to be a movie, why couldn't they get Tim Allen to come back and voice Buzz Lightyear? Because it's not like the guy's dead. You know, he probably could still do it. And honestly, this right here, replacing Tim Allen with Chris Evans, it, it screams that this is a political decision. Because let's be fair, uh, the vast majority of people in Hollywood right now do not like Tim Allen. And it's it's really a shame because as soon as I as soon as I watch, you know, as soon as I watch this, you know, as soon as I hear Chris Evans' voice, I, I'm gonna be taken right out immediately because even the uh, even the animated movie that was that Buzz Lightyear of Star Command um I think it was the adventure begins the, the yeah the um yeah what what was that movie called yeah yeah Buzz Lightyear of Star Command the the adventure begins they even got Tim Allen to come back and voice Buzz Lightyear for the movie now when they made it the show yeah when they made it into the uh, into the uh, the cartoon on the Disney Channel yes they did they did get another voice actor that wasn't Tim Allen but keep in mind that television back in, you know, early 2000s is a lot different than today. And this is not a TV show. It's a movie. And, you know, here's here's a first look at the Young Test Pilot that became the Space Ranger. We all know and love today. Light your launches in theaters June 17, 2022. Um, no Tim Allen. It's a hard pass for me. I'm sorry. But as like I said, as soon as I hear Chris Evans' voice, I'm going to get taken right out. I'm going to get taken right out of the movie. And next up, we have a bunch of Marvel Studios announcements. Now, guys, I'm probably going to go through these pretty quickly because a lot of this is stuff that we already know, but a lot of it, we have confirmed release dates. We do have WandaVision that did get a confirmed release date of January 15th, which I am probably going to watch. We do have the Falcon and Winter Soldier finally gets another release date, March 19th of, of next year, of 2021. So... You know, this show was originally supposed to come out in the fall of 2020, got pushed back because apparently it's going to continue from a plot point in the Black Widow movie. But honestly, this probably should have released in fall of 2020. Uh, next up, we have Loki. Uh, Loki is confirmed to come out in May of 2021. And um, for um, and for those that are, that are wondering, Loki is going to be in an alternate timeline if you remember in uh, Avengers Endgame, when you see Loki grab the Tesseract and go back to Asgard, that is the Loki that is going to be followed throughout this, you know, throughout throughout this series. So, at least there's some, at least it's an alternate timeline and they didn't just resurrect him again. Uh, next up, we have the What If. This is the one I'm actually interested in the most. Um, we just have a Summer 2021 release date. It's going to be animated. I've already talked about this and I... Already talked about this ad nauseum in my um in my MCU retrospective that I did back in April of 2020. Uh, it is probably on the platform that you are currently watching this on. Uh, then we have Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This is one is a hard pass for me. Uh, in theaters July 9th, 2021. Um, I have absolutely no interest in that movie, so pass for me. Uh, Miss Marvel. Um, for those that did not listen to the, uh, mega podcastic podcast that I was on, I think I was on episode 33. That was when the news broke that, uh, Amon Vellani was going to take over the role and as, as Kamala Khan. So that is not new information, uh, not new information to me, maybe new information to you. Uh, Miss Marvel is, uh, coming late 2021 to Disney plus and, um, Hold on, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna pause this because I'm gonna see if this if this is a trailer, and I really don't want to get copyright struck. So I will be right back. Never mind. It's just a bunch of people talking about you know the importance of Miss Marvel, blah 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 blah, whatever. Uh, then we have Captain Marvel too. Now we already knew that this movie was coming out, um, and then joining the cast are the recently announced Miss Marvel's Amon Vellani. So Miss Marvel will be in it, and Monica Rambeau, played by WandaVision's uh, Tiana Paris. Uh, Captain Marvel 2 flies in the theaters November 11th, 2022. Um, I'm probably going to go see this because I actually did like the first Captain Marvel. I do have a concern with Miss Marvel, though, in that 
The problem with Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel is she can shift her body mass around so she can make her arms really, really small and her hands really big. Um, in live action, I think that that's just going to look absolutely ridiculous, even with all the CGI that they're going to have to put in for it. But again, wait, I'm, I'm going to wait to see how they actually, how they actually accomplish it. Uh, next up, we've got, we've got Hawkeye, um, original Avengers Jeremy Renner returns to stars Hawkeye, teaming up with well-known Archer from Marvel Comics. Uh, Kate Bishop, played by the amazing ha um, Haley Steinfeld, and Kate Bishop was... Hawkeye's daughter. Uh, additional cast includes uh, Vera, Vera Farmiga, uh, Fra Free, and newcomer uh, Aliqua Cox as Maya Lopez, with episodes directed by Reese Thomas and directing duo Bird and Birdie. Hawkeye and original series coming to Disney Plus, blah, blah, blah. I have absolutely no hit, no interest in, in Hawkeye. Hawkeye was never really a character that I liked, and I don't really care about the Kate Bishop stuff, so probably just a pass for me. And She Hulk. Uh, we finally got a casting confirmation of uh, uh, Tatiana Maslany will portray Jennifer Walters slash She-Hulk. And Tim Roth is returning as the Abomination, which I think is actually rather cool that he is yet the that he is another actor returning from the Incredible Hulk. That, you know, forgotten MCU movie that I actually feel is criminally underrated. And Hulk himself, Mark Ruffalo, will appear in the series. Uh, direct, uh, directed Kat Coro and Anu Valia. She-Hulk is coming to Disney Plus, blah, blah, blah. I wish that they would bring back, like, like uh, Edward Norton just for a cameo. As just a nice nod to the people who liked, um, who, who actually liked, um, the, the Incredible Hulk. Uh, next up we have Moon Knight. Nothing was really announced. Not even the casting of, um, of, um, Oscar Isaac. So, maybe Oscar Isaac isn't gonna be Moon Knight. At one point it was rumored to be Daniel Radcliffe, but there's... You know, Moon Knight original series about complex Vigilante is coming to Disney Plus, and that was all that they announced. Uh, Secret Invasion. Uh, this was the Nick Fury series that was um, that was leaked to uh, Variety. I think the very first episode of TMRP. I actually covered that um, that leak. It might have been the first or second episode. I don't remember. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson is back as Nick Fury, and Ben Mendelsohn from Captain Marvel returns as the Skrull Talos in Marvel Studios' original series Secret Invasion. Coming to Disney Plus, so at least we have an official confirmation that the Nick Fury series is indeed happening. Uh, next up, we have Ironheart, and Ironheart is going to be a hard pass for me. Uh, Dominic Thorne is genius inventor Riri Williams in Ironheart, an original series about the creator of the most advanced suit of armor since Iron Man. I was not an Iron Man fan to begin with, so I really don't give a damn. Armor Wars, I might give it a shot. Uh, Don Cheadle returns as uh, James Rhodes, a.k.a. Warty. A.K.A. not Wardy, Rhodey, A.K.A. War Machine. I was trying to jump ahead of myself. An Armor Wars and original series coming to Disney Plus. A classic Marvel story about Tony Stark's worst fear coming true. What happens when his tech falls into the wrong hands? That one I I might give a shot because I do like Rhodey and War Machine. So, but Ironheart, no, that's a hard pass for me. Uh, next up, we have a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. Now, I have to wonder with this one, are we going to resurrect B. Arthur and have her, you know, do do a whole, like, musical number? And, uh, are we going to have a, uh, character named, uh, named Lumpy in it? Uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, James Gunn is back to write and direct. The original special is coming to Disney Plus in 2022. And then we have I Am Groot, everyone, everyone's favorite little tree, Baby Groot, will star in a series of shorts on Disney Plus featuring several new and unusual characters. I Am Groot, an original series from Marvel Studios, is coming to Disney Plus. Um, I might watch that. I might not. You know, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle on, on I Am Groot. You know, I watch Guardians of the Galaxy for more than just Groot. Uh, next up, we have a Thor Love and Thunder, and the only announcement that comes from this is that Christian Bale will join the cast of Thor Love and Thunder as the villain Gore the God Butcher. Hey, it's fucking distracting with all of these ice giants walking in, walking in behind Natalie in the middle of the fucking scene. Give me a fucking answer! I, 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 I'm so sorry. You're sorry? Well, fuck you! I, I'm I'm kind I'm kind of hoping for like a Christian Bale rant tape from this movie because this it would it would be hilarious because it, it would make it would mark the return of the uh, of the former um the former rant tape made famous by Christian Bale on the set 
of Terminator Salvation. And hey, he is a villain, so he can just, you know, fly off the fucking handle on someone. Um, there was Ant-Man and the Wasp 3. We already knew about it, but this did get an official title. Uh, Quantumania. Uh, Payne Reed is back to direct the third Ant-Man film. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Paul Rudd, uh, um, Evangeline Lilly. Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer all return. Catherine Newton joins the cast as Cassie Lang. And here's the big one. Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror. This is gonna. This is actually gonna be pretty cool if they pull it off correctly. Uh, Kang the Conqueror is going to probably serve as the gateway to to the whole cosmic verse for Marvel. And for those of you that have played Lego Marvel Super Heroes two, you know that Kang the Conqueror was the was the villain in in that game, and that's where he came from. He came from the cosmos. Uh, then we have the Fantastic Four movie. Uh, that will be directed by John Watts. Um, um, I think it's just currently in development, but, you know, okay. I mean, Fant 4 Stick was pretty bad. I actually liked the 2005 Fantastic Four movie that was made by Fox, along with the sequel. Th that was, those were good Fantastic Four movies. I don't know why everybody hates those. And then we've got the Black Widow movie, and this finally gets a release date of May 7th, 2021, more than a year after it's released, and here's the funny part, this is actually coming out after uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. So if Falcon and Winter Soldier builds off of a plot point that was in this movie, then why is Falcon and Winter Soldier coming out first? Why couldn't Falcon and Winter Soldier come out, you know, when it was originally supposed to in fall of 2020? I know that they had to do reshoots, but the reshoots were all done. The show was just sitting on the shelf re ready to go. So it must not be that big of a plot point if Falcon and Winter Soldier is coming out before the movie that the that has the plot point that the show builds off of. That's just that to me is just a bunch of horseshit. Uh, next up we have the Eternals. Uh, no release day. You know, me a new group of heroes in the Eternals. Uh, I'm not interested in the Eternals. I'm not going to bore you guys. Uh, we already knew about a Blade movie. Um, it has no uh, release date. Okay, here's a big one: Black Panther two. Black Panther 2 opening July 8th, 2022 is being written and directed by Ryan Coogler. Honoring Chadwick Boseman's legacy and portrayal of T'Challa, Marvel Studios will not recast the character, but will explore the world of Wakanda and the rich characters introduced in the first film. And I am glad that they are not recasting Chadwick Boseman. That would have been an absolute spin in the face to him. Because, and I'll give you, and I'll give you guys a perfect example. Uh, Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy. Heath Ledger is the Joker. If you remember, the Joker was originally supposed to play a much bigger role in The Dark Knight Rises, but Heath Ledger, Heath Ledger you know, unfortunately passed away of, of an overdose, and they delayed uh, The Dark Knight Rises by a year because they, they actively wrote out the Joker. You know, they chose not to recast Heath Ledger within that continuity. Now, obviously, if Black Panther, let's say 10 years down the road, uh, Marvel wants to reboot Black Panther... They're obviously going to recast T'Challa because it's in a new continuity. But in this continuity, recasting T'Challa would have been would have been seen in very poor taste. They got away with with recasting Rhodey from um, from Terrence Howard to uh, to Don Cheadle. But Rhodey was a side character. Imagine if they recasted Iron Man from Robert Downey Jr. to somebody else. People would have you know people would have lost their minds. But at least, at least with this one, they're they're gonna move on with Black Panther and probably just give somebody else the title. And they already introduced an in-universe way of recrowning the Black Panther. So I think Marvel was kind of thinking two steps ahead. And you know what's gonna happen if Chad if Chadwick Boseman cannot beat the cancer, uh, if he can't come back for any reason, or if he unfortunately passes away uh, before filming is basically to to start undergoing. Uh, then next up we have, um, actually the final announcement is Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness debuts March 25th, 2022. This is the only one I'm, this is the only movie I'm really looking forward to. Starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Elizabeth Olsen, Benedict Wong, Rachel McAdams, uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor, and, um, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that name. Um, actually I can try. Um, Chotil, uh, Gomez as America Chavez. So that's, uh, Marvel's Miss America, uh. Directed by Sam Raimi, the film ties to WandaVision and the next Spider-Man film. Again, 
a lot of the Marvel stuff is stuff that we already knew. And um, I gotta take another I gotta take another break right here, guys. I gotta get another drink of water. But uh, we will be right back to talk about the Lucasfilm and Star Wars announcements. And this one we're gonna be spending quite a while in. So uh, buckle up. All right, now let's look at all the Lucasfilm slash Star Wars announcements. And the first one we have is Rangers of the New Republic, uh, a new original series set within the timeline of The Mandalorian, is coming to Disney Plus. I wonder if this series is gonna follow Cara Dune. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ahead and predict that right now. I'm not big on predicting, but Rangers of the New Republic. I think that this is this is gonna be led by Cara Dune. Uh, next up, we have Ahsoka. Uh, starring Rosario Dawson, and set within the time when The Mandalorian is coming to Disney+. Plus. Yes, because an episode of Season 2 of The Mandalorian was basically a backdoor pilot that basically sets up her her motivation is basically to find Thrawn. And for those that watch Rebels, if you remember, um, Ezra was last seen, you know, going off with Thrawn, so it's it's led to believe that she's going that she's really going to look for Ezra for Ezra dur um, during during the series. But OK, uh, next up, we've got we've got Andor and this this has been announced for a long time. An original series set within the Star Wars universe is streaming in 2022. At least we have a year because before Disney Plus even launched, they announced the casting Andor series was. Hold on. Uh, Sorry about that, guys. Had some kind of my throat. Um, they announced the Cassian Andor series coming to Disney Plus, so at least we finally get a year of when it's coming. Then we have the Obi Wan Kenobi series, and here's what I don't like about it: Hayden Christensen returns as Darth Vader, joint Ewan McGregor and Obi Wan Kenobi. The original series begins ten years after the dramatic events of Revenge of the Sith, and it's coming to Disney Plus. I am not excited for the quote unquote rematch between. Darth Vader and Obi Wan. I think that kind of devalues the the fight in in A New Hope. Um, th this no, not not a good idea. This is entirely fan service, right here. Cut out Darth Vader. If if you can't do the Obi Wan Kenobi series without if if you have to if you have to bring in Darth Vader to the Obi Wan Kenobi series, then you probably shouldn't make it at all. Here's the one I'm actually really excited for: Star Wars: The Bad Batch. And I really do, I really did like these guys in Clone Wars Season 7, so I'm glad that they are getting their, they, that they're getting their own show. And apparently this one's going to take place between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. Um, and I, and I'm already guessing how, you know, continuity wise, they're going to, they're going to write how Order 66 did not affect them. And that's because they were defective clones to begin with. Therefore, what if their inhibitor chips did not go off and and you know put the order 66 in there done they were they were already defective to begin with so it's not that far of a stretch that order 66 that their inhibitor chips never got affected next up we have star wars visions star wars visions an original series of animated short films celebrates the star wars galaxy through the lens of the world's best japanese anime creators coming in 2021 to disney plus this one I do have optimism for like, cause I'm what, what I'm thinking with this, I'm getting like animatrix vibes. You know how the Wachowski, how the Wachowski brothers at the time got a bunch of different anime studios to do like, a, like short, you know, short stories that were set within the matrix universe. And you had a bunch of different styles. I'm kind of hoping that that's what star Wars visions is. But again, we're going to have to wait to see. I don't mean to add to the hype, uh, next up, we have Lando, the galaxy's favorite scoundrel. Lando Calrissian will return in Lando, a brand new event series, because we can't call it a mini series anymore, for Disney+. Plus. Justin Simeon uh, is in the early stages of developing the project. And yeah, Lando would not work as a long-form series. If they keep it as a mini series, it could work. Uh, then we have the Leslie Headland series, The Acolyte. At least we have a name and a setting. You know, with the ac the acolyte is a mystery thriller that will take viewers into a galaxy of shadowy secrets and emerging dark side powers in the final days of the High Republic era. I know the High Republic era is something that is relatively new to Disney Star Wars. I'm not going to pretend that I that I know everything about it, but at least with this one, we have it's not just Leslie Headland's Star Wars show. We now have a name and we have a setting, so at least we're a step closer. Then next, we have a droid story. Lucasfilm Animation is teaming up with Lucasfilm's visual effects team, ILM. 
to develop a special Star Wars Adventures film for Disney Plus, a droid story. The epic, the, the epic dream will will introduce us to a new hero guided by R two D two and C three PO. So I have to wonder: Are they going to build off of what the uh, Star Wars droids cartoons did in the late eighties? Uh, most of you listening to this might not even remember that th- that those existed. It's okay. Lucasfilm doesn't want you to remember those along with the Ewoks movies. Um, then we have the Willow series, which I've already touched on. Willow and original series, uh, starring Warwick Davis with plot with, with pilot directed by John M. Chu is coming in 2021, 2022, sorry, not 2021, 2022 to Disney plus. We've already talked about this ad nauseum. I'm not going to waste your time. Then we have Indiana Jones. Lucas phones in pre-production on the next installment of Indiana Jones at the helm is James Mangold, director of Ford versus Ferrari and Indy himself. Harrison Ford will be back to continue his iconic character's journey, Adventure arrives July 2022. So, wait a minute. It was originally supposed to arrive in July 2019, then July 2020, then 2021, now 2022. I have a sneaking suspicion that this movie is never going to get made, simply because, you know, I hate to break it to you, but Harrison Ford is getting to be an old man now. I mean, he was already an old man in um, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. He's even older now. So is he even going to really be able to do the same things that he did in the first four movies? Probably not. Uh, then we have Children of Blood and Bone. I've never heard of it. Uh, Tomi Adami's uh, New York Times bestselling novel Children of Blood and Bone is being developed by Lucasfilm in partnership with 20th Century Studios. This coming of age adventure follows a young African girl's quest to restore magic to her forsaken people. The Maji, I'm going to pass. That doesn't sound interesting to me at all whatsoever. Uh, and then they did announce that Taika Waititi is doing a uh, a Star Wars movie. So um, I do hold out hope because I really did like his... Uh, I really did like Thor Ragnarok. And the last Star Wars announcement was Rogue Squadron, directed by Patty Jenkins. This one I have some optimism for. Not just because Patty Jenkins is behind it, but I love the Rogue Squadron games. I never played the first one on the Nintendo 64, but I played a shit ton of Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron 2, and Rebel Strike, Rogue Squadron 3 on the GameCube. But here's here's my thing with with regards to the Rogue Squadron movie. Don't have any pilots be Force-sensitive. Just have it be a bunch... Just have it basically be Top Gun in space. But where you differ from Top Gun is you actually make an enemy. You know, the problem The problem with the Top Gun movie was that it was focused so much on the training and not really building up and not really building up the Russians as the enemy. So if you can make a compelling enough narrative, I'm I'm there for for Rogue Squadron uh, as long as it's compelling enough. And like I said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and skip over the Hulu announcements. I really don't give a damn about those. Uh, Nothing there that really excites me. But the last one that we are going to talk about is FX. And I love the I've loved the FX network for years. So the first one, so the first announcement is a series called Platform. Platform is an innovative script anthology from BJ Novak. Uh, for those of you, for those of you that are Office fans, he played Ryan on uh, on The Office, uh, the uh, the intern that turned executive, but then committed fraud, so he got demoted back down to intern. Uh, Platform is an innovative scripted anthology from B.J. Novak that uses the boldest issues of our times as a jumping off point to tell singular character driven stories about the world we live in today absolutely no interest this show is going to age very very terribly uh american horror stories i am not a ryan murphy fan so i don't give a damn about this from creator ryan murphy comes american horror stories a new anthology series spinoff of american horror story well american horror story was already an anthology series each season has a brand has a brand new story brand new setting so okay they're just making more seasons of american horror story uh it's always sunny in philadelphia uh, can I offer you four more seasons in this trying time? It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia has been renewed through season 18, making it the longest running live action sitcom in TV history. I have seen a few episodes of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I actually do find it pretty funny. So I am glad that they are continuing the show, even though uh, my experience with the show has been off and on. But the seasons themselves are not very long. They're only like, what, 10 episodes each? So... It's not going to be that hard for me to, you know, get into it. 
Uh, then we have The Old Man. In The Old Man Academy Award and Golden Globe Award winner, Jeff Bridges, is a former CIA operative who was forced to reconcile with his past. Doesn't really say a whole lot, but I'm also not going to say it's a bad idea either, just because right right now it's 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 just too vague. You know, there, more needs to come out about what it is before I can really make a judgment call on it. Uh, then you have Reservation Dogs. Uh, Reservation Dogs is a new half-hour comedy series about four Native American teenagers growing up on a reservation in eastern Oklahoma. Currently in development from co-creators Sterling Harjo and Academy Award winner Taika Waititi. I might give that show a shot just because Taika Waititi is involved, but it's going to have to wow me by, you know, episode three, episode four. Otherwise, that's when I typically give up on, on TV shows. Then we have Why the Last Man. Uh, Why the Last Man is a new FX Networks drama series based on the acclaimed comic book series of the same name, written by Brian K. Vaughan and, uh, and uh, Paya Guerra. I know I've pronounced that name wrong. Starring Diane Lane and coming exclusively to FX on Hulu. Um, again, more is going to have to come out. I'm not familiar with the comic book at all. So more is going to have to come out for me to make a judgment call. Now, here's one that I am genuinely excited for is an alien series on the FX network. Uh, alien is currently in development at FX networks. The first TV series based on the classic film series is helmed by Fargo and Legion's Noah Hawley. Expect, expect a scary thrill ride set not too far into the future here, here on earth. Oh, the fact that it's on earth. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that. But you know what I really do want? What I really want is for Disney to bring back Ridley Scott to finish his Prometheus trilogy. You know, Prometheus was, was a good movie. Alien Covenant was decent, not as good as Prometheus. I know he originally wanted to do five movies, but basically have Disney come back and say, okay, Ridley Scott, you've got one more movie to basically wrap this storyline up. Because if they don't do that, I think that they're going to piss more people off that they're now neglecting the Ridley Scott movies. Because, yes, there are fans of Prometheus and Alien Covenant, despite what some internet, you know, despite what some internet hacks, you know, want you to believe. There are some fans of it. Uh, next up, we've got a Shogun, uh, an epic saga that will take you on, on Journey Back to Field of Japan. Uh, this is the last... Um, announcement from FX. Uh, lastly, FX is developing a retelling of James of James Clavell's saga Shogun. Uh, Justin Marks and uh, Rachel Kondo are adapting the epic with award-winning producer Tim Van Patten. Now, for those that don't know, uh, Shogun was a miniseries released in the early '80s that originally starred uh, Richard Chamberlain and um, and uh, Toshiro Mifune. Um, I could see why they would want to do a remake of Shogun because the original series, it's five episodes long, but each episode is an hour and a half long. It's, it's, it's about, it's a nine hour mini series. So if, if they take Shogun and they cut out a lot of the filler and they make it like a five, like a five or six hour mini series, uh, they could potentially, you know, make it better, but Hey, you know, we're going to have to wait for it to come out. And this one, I probably, I probably will, will watch, you know, most definitely. And guys, that is it for the announcements because all that's left is the National Geographic stuff. I'm not really interested in talking about that personally. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to end the episode right here. Uh, this was a little bit shorter than the um, than the uh, HB Warner Brothers HBO Max situation, but not by much because we are going for almost an hour. So um, all that's left is uh, for you guys to know where to follow me if you want to follow me. I do have a blog that is metropolisradio.blogspot.com. Uh, if you, and I treat that more like social media than anything. If you want to follow me on a social media site, I am on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Metropolis. That is capital M, lowercase e, T-R, capital O, lowercase b, E-L-I-S-K. If you cannot fucking stand Twitter, which I do not blame you, I am also on Parlor with the exact same handle. And I also do a gaming live stream every Friday night around 10 p.m.-ish Eastern Standard Time over on the YouTube channel. And one last thing, if you guys enjoy the content that I produce, then please subscribe to both the to both the YouTube and BitChute channels. It's a small click for you, but for a small channel like mine, it really does help out a lot. Also, like, comment, and share this around. Only if you want to, you are never obligated to do so. Uh, the links to the blog, YouTube channel, and social medias are all in the description below. And with that out of the way, guys, this is going to do it for this week's episode of TMRP the Metropolis Radio Podcast. 
And uh, I will see you guys uh, next time.